Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. I hope uh, you've had a great week. Uh, I know uh, we've had better weeks. We've had better six weeks in our life, but uh, we're, we're getting out. I don't know if y'all know that our house flooded while we were gone. And we came back to a mess, and we haven't been in our bed since May 5th. So we're and we still haven't got anything resolved yet. We're still waiting on the insurance. So just keep us in your prayers. I'm going to say that first. Uh, I hope I know everybody's had a wonderful week. Uh, as you can tell, Bill's not here. I'm Bill today. Uh, it's hard, hard to use to feel, but Bill and Kay are in Dallas uh, visiting family for Father's Day. So, and so he he's in charge so, for this morning. And uh, saying that uh, they're celebrating Father's Day. I want to wish all the fathers in the room happy Father's Day. You know, as a father, we're we're blessed and honored to have that title. So, uh, just, uh, I know as a father, I, I, I love my kids, but I wasn't the, you know, that sometimes I wasn't the best, I've made my mistakes. Let me, and we all make mistakes, but you know what? God's there to help us too. And that's a tough job being a father. Tough job being a mother. Tougher job being a mother. It's a tough job being a parent. Also, Bill want to let me know, let y'all know uh, that he contacted Tara on the seven hundred dollars that the class donated to I think it was the what scholarship to children's camp, and she should be contacting you, Mary Lou. I, I've already done it, and I have a really nice thank you uh, email. Okay, Tara. well I yeah. figured you'd have, but I, he told me to make sure that. Yep, it's I, done. I it that was up. a really nice email. Thank you. Well, I did it online. It's the reason I, I don't know if she'll send a, a you know. A, paper thank you or not but a very nice email saying thank you okay thank you too just a wonderful class you know we, we give so much we, we're getting uh, god's in our heart the donuts today were brought by us paul and i and uh, the prayer note today is for phyllis Weaster and uh anniversaries is the howlers and the, the watkins the Howard the 22nd, the Watt is 25th. So can we do a happy anniversary? Happy anniversary to you. Happy anniversary to you. Happy anniversary, happy anniversary. Happy anniversary to you. All right. With that, we'll move into uh, prayer concerns. Or praises. Beth? I have one of each. Uh, the praise is that they will pour the foundation on our house tomorrow morning, starting at 5 o'clock. The prayer is, um, and Herbis asked me the other day this, he told all the fathers happy Father's Day, but uh, tomorrow Herb will have surgery uh, for his fifth cancer. Yeah. He was diagnosed with bladder cancer last Monday, and so they were going tomorrow and removed that, moved the cancer. So he's asked for I've got one uh, for mine. We're going Thursday. Uh, he got a result of his MRI back on his shoulder, and to our surprise, he has some tears and uh, some ligament damage. And so it's really, we've got some golf trips planned, and he is really nervous about what he's going to say. And I'm going with him because. I'm going to hear it. <laughs> You're going to make sure if he needs surgery, so he's really going to hear it, right? really just pray that, you know, the doctors do what they need to do for his shoulder. So. Hey, Dad. Is that a day surgery for Herb? Is that a day surgery, Mike? No. You, no, you, no oh, bet. Bet. Yes. Yes. It's a day surgery. I think we should keep in mind David Geyer, who's a member of the church, metastatic melanoma, is really apparently responding to chemo. So are you. So are you. <coughs> yeah, I'm responding. Yeah. We're keeping you in our prayers, too. Anyone else? Anyone else? Okay, let's bow our heads and go to the Lord. Heavenly Father, 
we thank you for this day, a day in your house, a day we honor fathers, especially our Heavenly Father. Lord, be with our earthly fathers as they seek to raise their children in these uncertain times. Also, Lord, be with our grandfathers as they strive to guide their children and grandchildren. Lord, be with us all in this time of high inflation as we lift up those, especially those who are struggling just to make monthly uh, payments, meet their needs. Lord, we know you're in control, and through you we can do all things. Lord, continue to bless us, bless this nation, and bless this wonderful church. Lord, we lift up Beth, Tommy and Sawyer. We lift up uh, her as he goes into surgery tomorrow. Uh, Lord, we just pray for the, the guiding hands of, of the surgeons, Lord, that uh, uh, we know where her and Beth's heart are. And we just pray that the surgeons uh, uh, take you in the room with them. We, we just we love her and Beth, and we, we just uh, he is going, he's in our thoughts and prayers. We love him. We just pray for a successful outcome. Lord Mary Lou uh, had asked for Mike to uh, give her the, the true uh, pr uh, diagnosis on his shoulder, uh, Lord. So we just pray that that uh, when the, he go that Mike go to the doctor, that Lord that his. Uh, that he will be allowed to go on the golf uh, tours and play, and that, that he won't be restricted. That right now he's his shoulder's not as bad of shape that he can he can continue playing golf, get 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 these uh, get these tournaments over with before he has to have surgery. And Lord, we lift up David Guy, battling cancer, melanoma. Uh, Lord, we just we just we know you're the great physician. Lord, just be with him, give him peace, give Judy peace, give them all. All we lifted up, peace and comfort, that, knowing that you're with us. Lord, we love you so much. Now as we get ready for class, we just ask you to be with Johnny as he leads our class discussion on Ruth, Naomi, and Boaz. Lord, we, we're so blessed to be here, and we love you so much, and we give you all the thanks and praise and glory. In your holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Good morning. So good to have you two back. Uh, like I told Donnie, I said I remember the face, but that's about all. <laughs> uh, Mike, where are you having your shoulder worked on? Where? I don't know. We're just I'm just going to the orthopedic first and find out about that. Okay. No, we don't need any more. <laughs> no, thank you. Oh, maybe the Lord got it. <laughs> we still Lord, Johnny, have you warned me about it? <laughs> we still have a landline. We're kind of antiques, I guess. But I get, I don't know, 12, 14 spam calls a day. Except they lay off on Sunday, maybe one or two on Saturday. But it all goes back to trying to say you uh, some kind of supplemental insurance, whatever. One of them this week. I, I, sometimes when I have the time, I just have to play with them a little bit. You can hear what the call center they're in, and they all have these dialects. And usually, I just say, "Why don't you get a real job and hang up?" But I don't do that all the time. But this. I started asking these real personal questions. And uh, it's like, hey, you're a diabetic, right? And I said, no. Is there, do you have pain on your knees? No. Will you have pain in your ankles? No. How about your elbows? And I said, the only pain I have is in my rear end, and you call. <laughs> <laughs> And then I, some of them are R rated that I respond to, but uh, most of them just hang out. Some like to battle with you a little bit. Okay. Uh, Betty had 
Yes. So we, got, we got something over here. I finally got my answer to it, how to make that call. I say, oh, heck, I'm in that same business. Do you have any luck? And they go, click. <laughs> <laughs> there ought to be a way to solve it, but uh, you know, that would require the federal government to do something, and we don't want to get them involved, or else they never come. Okay, Betty has sent this to me uh, this week. It says, don't wash your hair in the shower. It's so good to finally get a health warning that is useful. It involves the shampoo when it runs down your body when, you're, when you shower with it. A warning to us all. I don't know why, I, I, don't figure, I didn't figure this out sooner. I use shampoo in the shower when I wash my hair. The shampoo runs down my whole body and printed very clearly on the shampoo label is this warning. For extra body and volume. <laughs> no wonder, no wonder I've been gaining weight. Right? Well, I got rid of the shampoo and I'm going to start showering with Dawn and dishwashing soap instead. Its label reads, Dissolves fat that is otherwise difficult to remove. <laughs> Problem solved. If I don't answer the phone, I'll be in the shower. <laughs> Beth? Hang on. Eating my sandwich, and I looked, and the label says, "Do not eat this wrapper." <laughs> it's somewhere. It's somewhere. I got a picture. It's all got slewed up. Somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it looks like. Haven't seen that one. Mm -hmm. We've been having printer problems forever, and Bob's been trying to help me, and we went to buy a new printer like he has, two different places, both of them are out of them. I've got both of them ready to call me when they get them in. That's been 10 days ago. Long story short, I just got fed up and went and bought another $40 black, you know, XL564 for my printer. The printer works fine, it's just very expensive ink. So I wanted to email a couple things for you. I mean, to print them, and I did. And I started printing it vertically, and I couldn't, I couldn't stop it. And I did it four times because I went back and it wouldn't print, so I hit it again, print. So I've got four copies of this vertically. <laughs> this is called a parking ticket, and I think uh, I'd like to substitute a couple of words here. <laughs> My wife and I went into town and visited a shop. When we came out, uh, there was a policeman writing out a parking ticket. We went up to him and I said, come on, man, how about giving the senior citizen a break? And he just ignored us, continued writing the ticket. I called him a so-and-so. He glared at me and started writing another ticket for having worn out tires. <laughs> so my wife called him another bad word. He finished the second ticket, put it on the windshield with the first, then he started writing more tickets. This went on for about 20 minutes. The more we abused him, the more tickets he wrote. He finally finished, sneered at us, and walked away. Just then, our bus arrived, and we got on it and went home. <laughs> <laughs> we always look for cars with Biden-Harris stickers. We try to have a little fun. <laughs> We've got to have a little fun now that we're retired. <laughs> you know, that's probably a true story. <laughs> I'm going I'm I'm to try this Dawn dishwashing stuff. We, we have Dawn. So we're <laughs> Okay, let's, uh, the faith of a foreign woman, a 
think the title, in my opinion, doesn't really match what's going on in the story. I love this story compared to last week. Last week was really, I told you, hard for me. And it was, I've talked to people outside our class, and I've talked to our pastor, and he said, it is a tough chapter. Well, thank you. Why don't we just skip it? <laughs> this one was a breeze. It was shorter. We understood it. The characters were all we could relate to them. I really enjoyed uh, the faith of a foreign woman. Uh, hopefully, everybody got their. I'm sorry. Okay. I, I got just something that just came to me as I was looking at this, and I'm thinking. It's a beautiful story and I love it, but to think that we complain about our printer <coughs> and us complain about whatever's going on at our house and, you know, our house gets flooded, you know, all these things that we deal with. Think about these people and they were in a foreign country and they walked all the way. And in those days, a woman without a husband was nothing. I mean, absolutely nothing. And to think. And subject to. Right. Yeah. Just, you know, and these, these women that loved her enough to want to go with her. I just, you know, I mean, it just hit me all of a sudden. Yeah. What do I have to complain about? I have a doctor when I get sick, you know? Yeah, yeah good point. Thank you for bringing that up. The questions, uh, Mary Lynn sent out. I hope everybody got the four questions, and let's just go through them one at a time. They're all pretty easy, I think. First is, what what is uh, Naomi's relationship to Ruth? First of all, she is her sister. B, she is her cousin. C, she is her mother-in-law. And D, she is her friend. C. She is the mother-in-law. Very simple. I even got that one. <laughs> Number two, why did no, Naomi want to change her name to Mara? That means bitter. Sir? Sweet. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Let me get over there. Why don't you want to change her name? Well, because her feelings have changed. Naomi means sweet, and she said, I'm not sweet anymore. Mara means bitter. Okay. Well, the four possible answers are A, she had lost her husband. B, the Lord had made her life bitter. Not better, bitter. C, she had lost her son. And D, all the above. All the above. The Lord had made her life bitter. Let's come up with another word. Miserable. Um, catastrophic, really. Yeah, catastrophic. Sad. Number three, what was Ruth's reputation in town among the people? Reputation, still very important in that day. A, she was a woman of noble character. B, she was a poor widow who gleaned in Bozark Field. And C, she is... She was the young widow looking for a husband. D, she ran after the younger men in town. <laughs> okay, the answer to that is what? B. A. A is the words that Boaz used quite often. I don't know how long it took him to feel that. She was a woman of noble character. That's right in the, the chapter itself. Exact words. Noble, noble character. Okay, number four. Bozarth became Ruth's guardian dash redeemer. You know, I have all this, so it's not going to be good. Uh, when he became Ruth's guardian redeemer, what was his relationship with her? Or relationship to her? A, he became her legal guardian. B, he became her husband. C, he became her employer. And D, he became her business partner. B, she became husband. He became 
guardian redeemer. Uh, I thought about this and I thought about it coming here and I forgot. But then I, I didn't know whether these were going to work or not. Long story short, I forgot yeah. to put a whole slide up here to say half the Father's Day, and Donnie did a good job of that. Uh, we think we have it. Um, be honored or cool, but then he mentioned the mothers. You know, that's, to me, that's so much more <coughs> difficult. Uh, 31, chapter 31 weeks, we're a little over a third of the way done, or a third of the way, close to a third of the way. Centers all around the book of Ruth, uh, chapter 4, verse 14 through 15, that's kind of what we're Set her down here. Early in the story of Ruth, early on, first page or two, what did you see in her and her character? What did you see in this woman? I was telling Donnie we had 45 two weeks ago, 43 last week, and Father's Day took a lot of people out of town. Donnie, you had your hand up. You just said she loved, she loved her mother-in-law. I'm sorry, what? She loved her mother-in-law. She's a loving person. <coughs> loved her, wouldn't follow her advice, either, would she? She said, I'm sticking with you. Um, she also, uh, <clears throat> her mother-in-law also said, that how good she had been to her son too. Mm -hmm. So she's been a good wife and a good daughter-in-law. Yep. Good point. Very good, thank you. Others. Naomi have made that how could Naomi have made that trip without her? You know, I would look at that and think, oh, good. Yeah, in those days travel was not easy. <laughs> no. They, they probably had no donkeys. Well they didn't talk about donkeys or camels or anything else. They walked uh -uh. They, they walked like they owned on you know their shoulder. And she probably had to have food and water for her mother in law. On the way. That's what I thought when I read this this morning. I thought, oh my goodness, how could she have yeah. even gone without Ruth? Yeah. Very good. Uh, Trisha on the back row, Mike. I think she showed her bravery in a lot of ways, leaving her own country and then um, going and doing the things that Naomi suggested couldn't have been very easy. And then she was humble because she didn't think she was too good to glean the leftovers in the field. So she had a lot of good qualities. Yep. Uh, yeah. Thank you, well said. How is it tempting to be like Naomi when we face challenges in life? We have challenges. All the time. Uh, we all do. Challenge. Some are small, some are huge. Um, Donnie, hang on, Mike. Thank you, Mike. Well, it's hard. I mean, I'm, and I feel like probably everybody's like, it's hard to accept charity. It's easy for us to give charity. And I think this, that's what Naomi was. She didn't want charity. You know, she wanted, it's hard to accept, even though the Lord wants us to accept it, it's hard to, it's easy, it's easier for me to give than accept, and I think that's the boat she was in, if that makes sense. Yeah, well said. Uh, others? Here, two weeks in a row, man, I'm, I'm so excited. 
no worky on Sunday. Uh, yeah, thank goodness. Yeah, I hope it can continue that way. Well, we do too. Thank you for being here, Troy. Okay. Uh, other comments? What? How is it tempting to be like her? This could be something positive, I hope. Uh, do you think she was familiar with uh, God's law? Because she's the one that made the suggestion about going in and using Boaz. And that was the item that was in the law. About uh, your kinfolk and make sure that they... Uh, yeah, good point. Your husband's taking care of you and you pass away. And she's the one that suggested doing that. You know, that's why he's gonna, she's going to go in and follow him. Good point. Uh, Beth? So Naomi got frustrated. I mean, she was very frustrated, and then it, she frustrated got frustrated with what? With, with the everything Lord. that was going on in her life, and I think yeah. that's, uh, we're tempted to be that way. I mean, last Monday, I, when her called and told me, uh, I was, it was a shock. I was uh, wasn't really frustrated, but it's kind of tempting sometimes to be go. Why? I mean, why me? Why, why me? Us? I mean, why? Yeah. Why her? Why? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But we're tempted to be like that. But uh, that's why. That's why I'm, we were kind of like Nana. Yeah, good point. Very good point. Uh, anybody else? say this in the very beginning. I worked this week via email and phone with Johnny who works for the church about our detectors and why they wouldn't come on and why they wouldn't go off and he's traced it back to the hand unit on it. It belongs to he said it's corroded, it's an antique, blah blah blah. Uh, so you go on online to try to find one and uh, if we don't find one that will work and his suggestion, his suggestion first is just, just let's just move on and retire these. And there's, there's a value in these screens and to get a big TV and hang it here. One TV, the quality would be five times better, blah, blah, blah. So that's what he is suggesting and I think the church would pay for it. family done that all this years ago. It was a lot of money. And the prices have come down since then, but we're just, so we're working on it, okay? We don't know what we're going to do, Mike. The TV will be easier to use, too. Yeah. Well, it'll be one uh, one item versus two, Tony. These are old. I don't know how old they are, 15 years old, maybe. They've been moved three times to three different locations where this class was. Um, got our money out of them, so to speak, and like I said, one couple, I wrote one check for the whole thing, it was a lot of money. Uh, okay. That's an easy question. The process by which Ruth presents herself to Boaz, Boaz, is that how you pronounce his name? process, the way she did it, and how she presented herself to him is foreign to us. It's unusual. It, we, don't, we don't do it that way. What do you see in her actions that demonstrate having the right heart? And what she did and how she did it, which was unusual the way we live our lives today, how do you, what do you think her actions, how do they demonstrate having the heart that she has? I mean, you've got to go back, Jean. Uh, to, she was willing to get in the fields and go behind the men and get the scraps, what, what they didn't get. I mean, what was left over, which was, you know, not, they didn't have anybody to do that. She was willing to do that. Uh, well, first of all, she was very humble, 
she was very grateful and she um, respected her place in life at that, at that time. And she did not feel entitled to anything. She just worked. She was very grateful and humble are the two words that come to mind. We didn't hear her say, why me? Didn't look for handouts. I don't deserve this. Um, well, it'd be different today, wouldn't it? Uh, yeah. How people would react. Look back, this is a very simple short story, but young women, the daughter-in-laws, if they had not gone with Naomi. And in my mind, I thought, you know, they probably are stronger together than they would be separate. Mm. <coughs> yeah, good point. What are some of the noble steps that Boaz takes, the things that he did as he walked through the process of becoming the guardian redeemer. Just answer the first question. What are some of the noble steps that he takes? Well, he went to the other relative that could have a claim on their <coughs> And he went to the city gate and announced to everybody what his plans were. Yeah. He did it the right way. out of all of this. What did God bless him with? Hang on a minute. Well, quite a few things. Number one, he uh, vocalized that he was impressed that um, Ruth would uh, want to be with him and not go after the younger men. And so it made me think that perhaps he was quite a bit older. And then uh, he also gets, uh, he was uh, purchasing Naomi's land that her husband had uh, owned. And then toward the end of the story, he gets a son. He is blessed, uh, Ruth has a son, who ends up being the 
grandfather of David. They all got their name in the Bible forever and ever and ever. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's it's pretty, you can see where it's pretty important that long passage in Matthew where he's written it all for his views. He comes in there and says, you know, okay, David was the great grandson of Boaz, and he sticks that in there so they know that's in true. The New Testament, Matthew addresses. remembers of the part where Naomi and Ruth were talking in the beginning uh, people used to quote that in wedding ceremonies where you go I will follow and your people will be my people I don't think they do that so much anymore but for the longest time that was in a lot of wedding ceremonies yeah, you're right. yeah very good you know, I always thought that was interesting because I was always confused I was like okay this is not a man and a woman, but it's two women, but it was very sweet, and the words were very sweet, but as a younger person, I was always like, okay, that doesn't make sense, but <laughs> it was just very yeah. sweet, but it really, that, I don't think people use that too much anymore. That's a very good point. First sentence in this chapter, in the days when the judges ruled, there was a famine in the land. And we don't know how severe that was, but uh, you, you can imagine how it affects everyone. How can we see God's fingerprints in some of the ways that he provides for us today? His fingerprints. I like how that statement was, is written. I like what the author, how he put it. Uh, Donnie? Well, we've all been through tough times. And then you're on through the tough times and you look back and say that was a blessing. It wasn't a blessing going through it. It was a blessing for Naomi and Ruth, what they had to go through. They were blessed at the end. Mm -hmm. it, it was not easy going through what they went through. But. Yeah, and they didn't have a good attitude in the very beginning. I mean, they've been through <coughs> a lot. And uh, the whole country had, okay, everywhere you went. A pretty picture, and people just they didn't look up anymore, they looked in different directions, and they found new gods to worship and uh, became a very unholy land. Can I say it that way? Uh, fingerprints everywhere, every day, we see it. Yesterday we uh, ended the seven day streak of being over 100, 100 or above. I left, I don't, well, anyway, I left it, my radar app yesterday and there was a, a day before yesterday and it showed this <coughs> tremendous storms and heavy rain in Jacksonville. Tried to move west and didn't get there. Yesterday it was up around Breckenridge. <coughs> they had some really heavy rain, just real spotty down and up. And down. And, uh, <coughs> which you just got to pray. Um, okay, uh, fingerprints. 
your life. What anybody Pat? No what? Well, next weekend, Kendall and I are celebrating 57 years together. And if it wasn't for God's fingerprints and footprints, we wouldn't be celebrating as we will, thanking the Lord for each other and our family and the life he's given us. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Putting up with you. It's a miracle. That, that's a miracle. I can say that to you. I don't need too long. Other comments? Come on. We don't want to finish early. You guys will be bored. <laughs> no, you will. No, I'll never get bored. Okay. Last question after reading chapter nine. If you had one question, just one on one, sit down, put your chairs together, and just say, Lord, why did you do this? Why did you do it that way? Why, why did you pick her? Why did you pick him? What would be your question to the Lord about what we read in chapter nine? What would be your one question? Or would it be a comment? Maybe not a question. Maybe just a statement you'd like to make to him. Come on. Okay, hang on a minute. I think that maybe when you have test one, two, test one. <laughs> uh, I think that the whole purpose, to me, the whole purpose of this is a way to get the lineage. Uh, David and therefore Jesus Christ into the battery. Keep talking, Gene. The batteries went out in the mic. Um, you drained it. Go ahead. But it was a way to get the lineage of Jesse, David, and therefore Jesus Christ into the, the nation. And to me, that's the whole purpose. Um, it seems like this entire city Very good point. Others. Okay, Suzanne, you to speak out, baby. No problem. Um, <laughs> I don't have a problem with that. Teacher, um, I would say thank you, thank you, God, for the story of happiness and hope and loyalty and redemption after those miserable two chapters that we had to find <laughs> before. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I wasn't the only one that had no. rough feelings on eight and even seven. Well, the whole reasoning is to see how God works through through history and through His plan. You know, and and we can we can look at it in our own lives. You know, the, the, this country has a lot of challenges right now. More than I can remember in, in, in my lifetime. And I was talking to someone the other day about gas prices. And, uh, it doesn't affect us as much as it does that next level of income down where people are just really hurting. Mother and Daddy used to tell us the stories. I was the baby of three children, two older sisters, and my daddy managed F and W Woolworth store on the square in Tyler, Texas. And he walked to work every morning with a coat and tie on and a hat, all the men wore hats. And ran or shine. They just rolled their pants up to their knees, get buddy and go. Well, the streets weren't paved, and uh, two of the three of the guys would walk together 
you know, from the neighborhood areas that weren't downtown. Because there weren't malls then, there weren't strip centers, it, everything was downtown. Sears and Roebuck, J.C. Penney, Montgomery Ward, you know, they all had strategic locations in every town you go plow through. But S.S. Cresses was the big competitor to F and W Woolworth, blah, blah, blah. But Daddy could tell me the stories, and I thought how terrible that would be to have to work a mile and a half every day and work six days a week, not Sunday, mm -hmm. uh, in all kind of weather. I mean, you can imagine what their clothes looked like when they got there, and especially when they got home. You know, then the wife sitting there, and she's taking care of three babies or three children, and 10, five, and one, washing, drying, and back then you didn't have the wash machines, the dryers, we didn't have dryers then. Uh, when it rained outside, I don't know how we died, dried everything, but we did. If they got drunk, I don't know. Uh, we didn't have dishwashers, we didn't have all that stuff. But you know, we think we got it tough. They didn't ever complain about it. That was just a way of life. And uh, Trisha, you know, did it work in mind? Yep, it's working. I think it's really fun to realize that God's not done writing books. Right. He told us that our names will be in the book of life if we love Jesus and follow him and are devoted to him. So um, as we live, I think that's what we should think every day is that this isn't just something that's happening. It is a part of God's story now and forever. I don't have my real Bible with me. I've got all these quotes written down on the inside cover. Some of them I really like, and I'm trying to remember what one of them says about be thankful for your problems, blah, blah, blah. So anyway, uh, anyway we, it, as many problems as this country has, we're still the best country in the whole world. Uh, all you veterans out there, you made it that way. And uh, um, I take it very personal when our country is attacked by today's culture and today's uh, uh, people that are different than we are, all these different groups. Uh, I take it very personal. And uh, it hurts. You want to do something about it. Uh, the bad side comes out of you, you know. Uh, anyway, I, I have to. I have to help manage that. I do. Uh, how I react to certain situations. Anyway. Okay. Can you close? Yeah, I'm sorry. Hang on, Janet. We got a working mic. We got a mic is working with this mic. <laughs> <laughs> well, what if I if I were going to ask God a question, it would be the fact that up until the story of Ruth. God's plan seems to be that he doesn't want the Jewish people to intermarry with any of the Canaanites, any of the foreigners. He doesn't, he doesn't want that. But then here we have Ruth, who is not a Jew, and she suddenly enters the picture and is a uh, great-great-grandmother of David. I would ask him, what, why? Why did you suddenly decide it's okay for a non-Jew to become a part of the story. Yep. Very good point. Very good. Thank you, Janet. Okay, others. Anybody else? Trisha, you, did you have your hand halfway up? Yeah. Um, I love Janet going there. That's great, too. So it was against the rules for the Moabite women to be married to the Jewish men. But what I love to know is that sometimes we make wrong choices and God can still use them for his plan and for his glory. And I think that he, he devises ways to incorporate all people for now and he can use bad happenings for good, for his glory. Good point. Anybody else? 
real quick. It's, I'm it's, sorry, Donnie. It's a story about life. You know, you, you have heartaches, you have rewards, uh, you, you go through trial and tribulations and, and good endings, and you, and you hold steady. So, uh, to me, it's a story of life. Anybody else? Okay, thank you for your comments. Thank you for being here. Uh, <clears throat> I, 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 I have no idea what the next chapter is about. Anybody just gone ahead and read the next chapter just for fun? Probably not. <laughs> Standing tall and falling hard. That ought to be good. Better try reading it now. It's a lot of it's Samuel. Samuel. Oh, yes. It is. Oh, Samuel. Okay. They gave us Okay. Let's close in prayer. Father God, thank you for. morning, thank you for this class and what it means to so many people. Uh, and, and Mike and others go to so much trouble to record it. You get it uh, in an email sent that others can read it, uh, share it, and listen. And, uh, share it is the big word. There, there's lots of Lots of hearts out there we'll never meet, we'll never see, uh, uh, that are tuned in, and uh, that's that's cool. When we uh, a year ago took a lemonade, lemonade, it is uh, still producing. Father, we thank you for that. We thank you for, like I said, this class. We thank you for this church. it is. Thank you for the good attitude that gets us through a lot of our problems, Father. We just continue to look up. If we do that, it'll be fine. It's so easy to take our focus off of you. It's so easy. It is. Speaking for myself, it is. If we just continue to look up, uh, things, uh, things keep, keep working out. Thank you for that. Thank you for your son, Lord special and beautiful name.